just got back from Europe. Yes, I was in Europe with uh, Jack Dijonet, and uh, it was very smooth. Um, we went to, uh, as I was just saying, yeah. uh, Norway, uh -huh. Sweden, Finland, Germany, Austria, um, Bosnia, yeah. Poland, wow. uh, Italy, did I say Italy, Spain, <laughs> Portugal. That's enough. <laughs> who, else, who else was in the band? Uh, it was Don Byron, featuring Don Byron on clarinet, and uh, Jerome Harris on bass and some vocals. So That sounds like a terrific experience. It was really great. Musically, it was... Uh, it's, it's one of the best tours I've done, for sure. Really? Um, just when you look at it overall. And, and uh -huh. uh, you know, playing with Jack is... Uh, it's, it's another experience altogether in terms of music you know mm -hmm. and and playing with don too i mean i've played with don a lot over the years in his projects mm -hmm. um should we start over no we don't have to start over you can just uh, somebody's at the door come in come oh. in oh well <laughs> maybe i should put a sign there is a sign i uh, know but like <laughs> you know it's okay it's okay. what it is. All right. All right. So anyway, so so um, I, I was going to start out with the 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 Har Silver gig, but since you're already talking about Jack DeJanet, right? This new album is pretty amazing. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's you and, and Jack and uh, Larry Grenadier uh, on bass. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I really hadn't played. I mean, I've been playing with Jack since 2009, late 2009. Um, so he was kind of my first choice. And, um, you know, because I've been playing with him, it kind of makes it easier. And um, But I wasn't sure who to get on bass. I feel like, you know, Larry is one of those people that I've always admired his playing. We had only played together once, um, but I kind of thought that he and Jack would be a very interesting fit. And it turns out that they were, um, or are, uh, and it's documented now. So um, I don't know how much they had played together in the past. Not a lot, but... Um, certainly their sounds work together and, and conceptually just I mean we didn't rehearse we just kind of got together and played and you uh, prepared the tunes here at PSU though right well yeah um, I feel like my students were my guinea pigs with some of these tunes um, I have a, an ensemble called the Park Avenue group mm -hmm. and which consists of Nicole Glover saxophone John Lakey on bass and uh, last year was John Hewson on drums and so uh, we were able to kind of work on the music, and f you know, for them it was a really good experience. But it was also good for me because I, you know, got to play through it and, and experiment a little bit. So then when I got to the studio, you know, I had a little bit more of a feel for it. just the sort of the concrete things, the chord changes and the mm -hmm. structures. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing about playing with guys that are really creative and really adventurous um, and really experienced is that you really don't know what to expect. You have to sort of um, always be on your toes. You have to you have to really play in the moment. You can't, it's not, you know, because when I say that I prepared these tunes, it's not to say that I had sort of a preconceived notion as to how it was going to be. Because um, certainly my students don't play anything like, yeah. you know, Jack and Larry. So, and that's not a value judgment. It's just they're different people at different places in their lives so um, what Jack and Larry brought to the music was I tried to and this is always my approach is that I just I welcome that I say okay because that's what I want I mean I wouldn't hire people like that and then tell them what to do that's insane yeah. you know yeah. um, so I'm just gonna ignore that <laughs> so um, uh, but um, but yeah I mean we didn't rehearse, and uh -huh. we just kind of went, you know, not mostly first takes, some really? multiple takes, just to kind of have two takes to. to is there is is there a tune that, that, that where something happened that actually surprised you that took maybe took a tune a step forward? Uh, I'd say all of them. Really, all of them did. Yeah, they uh -huh. all kind of eventually end up in a place that I never thought it could be. One in wow. particular is called uh, Her Majesty, mm -hmm. um, and I was really surprised to see where that went, you know. Um, I think, you know, Jack is one of those musicians that, I mean, he, he has a lot of, what people don't, I think, understand about Jack DeJanet is that 
he knows a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like most older people do. As uh-huh. you get older, you just absorb more information, you learn more. But he's also been, you know, a musician his whole life. And he's done a wide variety of things. I mean, yeah, he played with, with Miles and he played uh-huh. with, you know, a, a, everyone else. Everyone else, yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> um, but, you know, he's into the Beatles, he's into the uh-huh. band, he's into <laughs> Bob Dylan, he's into, uh-huh. like, all these other things, you know, he's into classical music. He plays, he'll sit down and play Bach Inventions on the piano, you know what I mean? He'll, he knows TV themes, he's into, he's into comedy, he's into, and all of that influences his, his uh, creativity. So, uh-huh. so it's like, it's kind of this... Again, it's not like he has a bunch of things that he just pulls out at will. It's it's like this just endless amount of creativity. And yeah. then to try to go beyond that. So it's sort of going... It's like there's all this stuff that is drawing on the known in a spontaneous way. Yeah. But then sort of in a way that's sort of like, well, where can we go that we've never been? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Or, or throw something in that's maybe yeah. going to take you another direction, yeah. you know? Now, of course, all of your all, all of your 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 albums are, are personal, but there's a couple of tunes in here that are extra special, personal, aren't there? Well, um, there's two pieces that were influenced by the, um, the Newtown shootings yeah. because um, I knew um, one of the people involved. Uh, we were very close to um, the Green family when we lived in Winnipeg, and so uh, I guess you know, not to be morbid, but I never really knew anybody who was murdered like that. So, um, you know, that I, I, it was kind of happening at the time, and I felt like I just wanted to, ex, you know, kind of explore that emotion musically, um, you know. Uh, but those type of things that occur in life, I think that's, you know, um, those strong emotional things that, that you want to express. So I... I mean, the, the, the older I get and the more that I think of myself as an artist, I know that sounds incredibly pretentious, people. That doesn't but, really. You know, I am an artist. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, like, but I think that we, you know, in, like, in terms of our students, we're training musicians, but, you know, a musician is an artist some more than others. Mm-hmm. You know, so what is the art about? The art is about expression. The art is about creativity. The art is about you know, getting in touch with your feelings and putting them into your art. So this was a pretty powerful um, uh, thing that happened. Um, and just, you know, it's it's so tragic on many levels. It's, it's a tragedy for our country. Um, it's an ongoing tragedy because it's just sort of highlighted the ridiculousness of our government and the ridiculousness of certain segments of our population who insist on this very ignorant stance on the issue. Um, and, you know, some of the things people were saying after this, it's just, you know, you're just embarrassed, yeah. you know. And especially being in Europe and people kind of look at some of the things that are happening here and they're just, they just scratch their heads, they just don't right. get it, you know. Right. So there's that, and uh, so that's where outrage, I think, uh-huh. that's a lot of that is sort of the, the outrage that this could happen, the uh-huh. outrage that it continues to happen. Um, that we continue to have just random gun violence, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but you know, it's 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 the 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 sadness of you know. I mean, this little girl came into my home. Yeah. You know, like we yeah. knew her. Yeah. You know, not well, but she you know she's a little right. girl. But yeah. still, it's like you know somebody that you had some kind of contact with, and to to have you just wonder. Yeah. You know, she didn't deserve that, you know, and especially the Greens are the, you know, uh, Jimmy and Nelva are, you know, they make, uh, I mean, they've brought parenting and family mm-hmm. life to a whole different level, you know what I mean? They're, mm-hmm. they're, that's really all that they're about is mm-hmm. is being parents. So to, to, to watch that happen to them was really, so I don't know, that came through in some it's of the a, it's, a, it's a very moving tune. That's Thank for you. sure. Thank you. For sure. Well, let's get to the gig, <laughs> December twelfth. So, is that when it is? <laughs> yeah. I, I'll I, be there. I looked it up this morning. Uh, so, what what is important about Horace Silver? 
Well, Horace Silver is, um, is, I think that he's somebody that gets ignored for some reason. I think, you know, uh, you don't hear a lot of pianists saying that one of their major influences is Horace Silver. Right. And I think it's because he doesn't necessarily play in a pianistic way. But that's really fine, because in jazz music, uh, it's not, I don't think it's really about I mean, it can be. There are some pianists that play very pianistically, and they're yeah, great. Yeah. But um, I think that any instrument, it's almost like its almost like all the instruments are the same, and it just depends on you. It's really more about you mm -hmm. as opposed to your instrument. Mm -hmm. So to me, Horace Silver plays, he plays the piano like it's a drum, or he plays it like it's a blues singer, or he, or he plays it like it's a bass, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or, or he plays it like it's a big band. He doesn't necessarily play it like it's a piano. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think for some pianists, maybe that's a turnoff. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I mean, but um, certainly as a p composer, he's one of the most prolific. And that's another thing that people don't really think about. When they th you think of jazz composers, you're like, okay, Monk, Wayne Shorter, mm -hmm. Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, Horace Silver, who, who has tunes that everybody plays, yeah. you know? Yeah. So... Um, where there's a jam, there's a Horace Silver team. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, um, so I mean, I don't know. I think for me, Hor Horace Silver is, you know, I would say he's in my top ten for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other people maybe I'm into more, but yeah. I, I, I love. Yeah. I always get something out of listening to Horace Silver. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's always, and it's, and it's usually something that's so. It's so simple yet it's so brilliant. You know what I mean? And you can yeah. hear. Yeah. When he pl he also plays the piano like a composer, but that's not to diminish mm -hmm. his pianistic ability because he could play the piano. Yeah. But you know you can hear the thought process, you know, and he's a great improviser, you know. So again, I, it's sort of a mystery to me yeah. as to why he yeah. he just seems to get left in the dust. I mean, people will say, okay, hard bop. Horace Silver, Art Blakey, blah, 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 you know what I mean? But I think just his own, he has kind of his own uh, history, you know what I mean? He's in a class by himself. What do you think you're going to play? <laughs> I have a bunch of tunes in mind. <laughs> yeah. I kind of have to get the arrangements together, but yeah. uh, there's a tune called St. Vitus Dance, which I've mm -hmm. always loved, and then there's Opus de Funk, which I've always loved. Right. And Maybe I'll hit some of the classics, maybe some of the more obscure things. Um, I don't have it all together yet, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. <laughs> okay. well, welcome home, George, and we'll see you at the Mission Theater. I see you then. All right.